Okay guys, forgive the horrible lighting in this part of the video, um, but what I wanted to do was put together a small video showing how I use a soldering iron in the workplace um, to rejoin two pieces of wire. Uh, you'll notice that in the video, uh, it's my daughter making noises in the background, uh, in the video I refer to the wire as as the conductor. So just so there's no confusion, when I say conductor in the video, I am talking about the pieces of wire that I am joining with the solder. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is c-e-r-e-y-1984 at gmail.com and I'd appreciate any feedback you can provide me with. Enjoy the video. Uh, what I've got laid out on the table, I've got a standard pair of wire strippers or installation strippers. I've got a butane soldering iron here. Um, I use this soldering iron because it is easy for me to uh, use whenever I'm working around automobiles. It's a PowerPro brand. Um, it's a, a mobile device. As long as you've got butane, you can go ahead and fill it up here and you can pretty much take it anywhere with you. I've got a helping hand or a third hand. It's commonly referred to a third hand because it gives you the ability to work with both of your hands while this is holding the wires. Got a couple pieces of wire here that we're going to strip. Got some solder and I got a piece of steel wool. So we're going to go ahead and begin the process. Um, this is the soldering iron I'm going to use. Again, this is a butane based soldering iron. If you work on a lot of electronics, you're typically not using one of these. You're going to use an electric um, plug-in style soldering iron, but great soldering iron nonetheless. And again, since I work in the automotive industry, uh, this is very convenient for me for working in tight locations or I can just throw it in my toolbox with me or my tool bag and wherever I go I've got uh, access to a soldering I don't need power. Um, first thing you want to do is clean off the tip. A lot of times what will happen when you're soldering is you'll get a, you'll get a little bit of debris stuck on the tip uh, from the insulation. Sometimes insulation will melt. Um, so you want to do a quick and dirty inspection of the tip uh, before you begin the soldering process. You want to take your sections of wire here and you're going to want to strip those back, find the appropriate gauge. You do not want to strip any pieces of wire at when you're stripping the insulation. So we're going to go ahead and peel this out. There's one section stripped there. And go ahead and peel this out. Another section stripped there, sitting side by side. So I'm going to go ahead and use this helping hand. What I typically like to do is take the ends of the wire, roll them over one another, and then stick them in the helping hand, or the third hand, then rolled over one another slightly. And then what I'm now going to do is go ahead and uh, turn on the iron. You hear the igniter on this one. Again, this is a butane iron. Roll up the heat a little bit on it, and then we clean the tip off already. Take our solder spool here, and this is called tanning the tip of the iron. We're going to take a little bit of the solder here, and this is 6337.10 lead. It's got a melting temperature of around 370 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. Get that all over the tip of the iron. We're going to use this to transfer heat. This is an important step in the soldering process. Okay. Then what I like to do once I've got this nice and coated, take the iron, and since this one's got a little, little exhaust fan on, I've got to make sure this is pointing in a safe direction. I will take the tip of the iron and touch it to the wire. What I need to do is get a little bit of solder to pour from the tin tip into the wire. You're actually going to heat the wire and let the solder melt into the wire. A lot of people think uh, you can just wipe solder on the wire or wipe it from the tip onto the wire. That is not the correct way to do it. The conductor in the circuit has to be heated and the solder has to melt to the conductor. Now that we're done pouring solder onto the wire, what we're going to do is remove it from the helping hand and just inspect. What I'm looking for in a solder joint is to make sure it's uniform, uh, make sure the diameter of the solder joint does not significantly exceed or really exceed at all the, uh, uh, the diameter of the insulation on the wire. And I'm also going to check for burrs or snags. Um, typically if this was going to be going back in service I would also take a piece of heat shrink tubing, 
slide it around the conductor away from the heat until I solder the joint, slide the heat shrink tubing back over the top of it, and then heat the heat shrink tubing so it uniformly seals itself to this joint that we just soldered uh, to make certain that this is going to be protected from the elements. But since this is just for demonstration purposes, uh, we just poured the solder on, let the solder joint get hot, the conductor itself, and then touch the uh, solder to the conductor until it melts into the joint cleanly, and that's pretty much how it's done. Pretty basic.